pessoal, agora o Fábio Mascarenhas vai nos contar um pouquinho da experiência deles com o um tipo estático em Lua. Uma salva de palmas para o Fábio. And, and hello, hello everyone. This talk will be in, in English because uh, we're trying to keep English, Portuguese, and let's see if the the projector is going to behave correctly. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about about type Lua, and uh, I'm Fabio presenting, but it's, it is far from a solo effort. I'm I'm just one of of the authors and and one of one of the designers. This, most of the work was done by André Maidr, that he's, he owns the, the GitHub repo where the, where the code is. And right now, there's a, a Google Summer of Code a student doing a lot of work on the, on the new version of the compiler. So uh, I think everyone by now knows uh, about dynamic typing and static typing and, and dynamic language and static language. And the trade-offs, the pros and cons of each of these approaches for writing programs. Dynamics great, you can write quickly, you, it's, it's low ceremony, you program really fast, change code and everything, and re very flexible, but when things go wrong, it's often very hard to know where the problem is and fix it. While with the static language, you have the compiler to help you find bugs and can also uh, put some structure around your, your program uh, that's useful when uh, six months from now you're going to work on that again or, or another person tries to work on, on your program. On the, other, on the other hand, it's a lot more work and makes the language much more complex to work with. And the great, great problem of dynamic language is runtime errors. Who never got something like that when programming in Lua or in Ruby or Python or JavaScript, etc. And this is a nice tech trace. It can be much worse than that to find what really happened with your program. So why, don't, why can't we have both static and dynamic in the same language? And start, start with a dynamic prototype and program really fast. And then once we are confident about the design of the program, we go back and add types and add structure. And the compiler helps us find the bugs. And the past few years, several dynamic languages have added this. You, we have uh, JavaScript with not just one, but two static type systems for, for JavaScript. We have a JavaScript-like language called Dart. We have PHP. We have Clojure. And type at Lua, we are starting to get something usable by the, the programmers. So what type at Lua is? It's a dialect of Lua. It's, a, it's kind of another language by, by now that uh, resembles Lua in a lot of aspects, that interoperates with Lua freely, but it's really a, a, another, another language by, by this point. And you can have both regular dynamically typed Lua code and uh, statically, typed, statically typed code in the same program, often in the same function or in the same module, but it's better to separate things and, and do these things separate. Uh, it doesn't have much ceremony when, when, when writing. Type annotations are mostly uh, restricted to, to parameters or functions. And you can, you can omit from most of the local variables. And there's a, there are some new language constructs. That, that, that's the part of the Google Summer of Code project that we're doing right now. And compiles down to regular Lua, idiomatic. You can read the, the, the result of the compiler and understand what's going on. It's not a, 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 complete, a completely different language. 
So Lua is a uh, little hard to really give it, give it type safety because there are a lot of, lot of features that are very flexible, but if you try to type it all the, the flexibility that they have, you get a complex, a very complex type system, and this means uh, terrible error message if something go, goes wrong. And a very complex type system would go against the, the Lua philosophy. So we, we think it's wrong to get a complex type system to try to, to, to get regular Lua code and, and just make it behave as if it, it were typed. But uh, Lua has, what are the, the problems that we, we have typing Lua? Well, tables for everything, because we have to fit everything in the same framework. There are lots of overloaded functions, and the overloading here is, is, uh, is difficult to deal with. And uh, modern systems right now, not so much, but most of, most of the modules use uh, a, a single style, but object systems, there are a lot of them, and we have to try to take this into, into account. And there is also metaprogramming, and the object systems themselves are, are metaprogramming. The way you implement classes and inheritance in regular Lua is metaprogramming, and this makes it really hard to give static types. So a very simple example, almost trivial, of typed Lua. You have on the uh, uh, typed function, fully typed, everything there is statically typed because of those two type annotations, and uh, a mix of static and dynamic on the here. If you omit type annotations in the parameters, they get that any type, that's the dynamic type, and the any type is, um, it can be upcast and downcast to anything. So we, um, the, re the result of a subtraction of two n's is an any, but you can uh, downcast it to a number and call ABS, and the result will be a number, hopefully. That's where bugs can creep in back in the in, in an optionally, optional, optionally typed code. Another, uh, uh, an important idiom of Lua is optional parameters by uh, doing an OR of the parameter with the, the default value, and this is supported by, by the typed Lua compiler. So, uh, you can, you can say that the type of something is something or new. That's what the, the, the interrogation sign means. And if you do that or, after the, that, type at Lua is sure that greeting is now a string. So you can have an optional parameter, but the rest of the function works as if the new case cannot happen and really does not happen. Uh, because of the way Lua handles errors, another common idiom is to have, uh, oh, really, to have, sorry, to have overloading on the, the, the return of functions. It's very common for a function to either return uh, the regular, the regular, oh, sorry, this is not, this is regular overloading uh, using type to discriminate between two options. You have something that is either a string or a number, and then you can, in, in one arm of the if, this has one type, in the other, this has another type. This was, is what I was talking about right now. Uh, the division function either returns two numbers or returns one new plus a string. And that if there discriminates between those two, two possibilities. So in the, in the else, R is a string. You also have, can use tables as records. There's some syntax sugar for, for that. That interface declaration is just sugar for, for a table with two, with two known fields. And you can 
You can use it and start with a table with fewer fields and add them in the type system tracks everything. Mm. Okay, let me s Lua modules also work as they should. The, this model is, is, is fully typed and when you use it, the type system can track and signal if you're using it wrong and its type is a simple table. And this is what we're doing right now is object orientation. Uh, with, uh, uh, we, we try to do it by uh, typing uh, some of the patterns that Lua programmers use, but this is really, uh, really brittle. So we thought it would be better to start with the special syntax and then uh, support all the different ways that Lua programmers can define classes and do inheritance by writing different backends for the, for the compiler. So that's the approach we're doing right now. And we can have, we can have classes, they can have named constructors, we can construct them and use them just as a regular Lua program and do single inheritance and uh, and the last thing what uh, we are working right now is to also have uh, polymorphism or generic classes, functions, everything in, Slu in type at Lua, this is the last and, but we're, and this is, well, I think I just ran out of time the last slide is one of the, the last features that we, we are in, we're implementing because we, uh, to get some of the flexibility of, of uh, not having a type system back, uh, we let the programmer declare that two types are compatible um, after they have been, they have been, been written. Out we can have in another model that's going to use these two types, you know they are compatible, you can declare them, I saw in the compiler will go and check this for you, and after that, they're treated as compatible. So you have the, the ease of use of a regular type system like you, you have in Java and C Sharp and, and TypeScript and Dart, with a, a structural system uh, structural compatibility between, you, you have two types that look like they should be compatible, you can check if they are, are actually compatible, you can tell the compiler to check it for you and they will, will be compatible from that point on. So, uh, thank you, sorry for overrunning the, the time a little bit. Uh, there's a, the, the version without classes and generics is on, on Andreas GitHub. And uh, the classes and generics work is, is ongoing. Uh, you can follow the development there in, in Kevin's GitHub and it's progressing quite, quite, the progress has been quite good. We hope to have something running by the end of August and can, can release it to the can do a general release. Uh, thank you. Hi. Um, I would assume that it's um, conceptually wrong in typed Lua then to, to call a function passing a table as a parameter. Mm -hmm. And so uh, am I right to assume that in typed Lua you're expected to call a function passing the, all the arguments in line with their types specified? Excuse me? Um, when, you, when you use a function, you have yeah, to when, when you call a function, types? instead of passing in a table as a parameter with lots of stuff inside it, mm -hmm. is it expected in typed Lua to call a function passing all the parameters in line as first, mm. second, third parameters? No, you, you can pass a table. You just have to declare that the, the, uh, the parameter, the type of it is a table of all the things that you, you want to, to pass. You can define the, the type of that The table. type of a parameter can be in a table. You can either, you can either do, do that type in line or you can give it an alias and use that alias. Uh, I think it's, but, the, but the, you can use the, the you, you can in a type declaration do uh, braces, open braces, 
write the table type close yeah. braces in line. Um, the error message will, will not be as good as if you, if you gave it an alias instead of an anonymous. We're trying to make this better by using the, the name of the parameter as the name of that anonymous type, like, like, kind of like Lua does with anonymous, with its anonymous functions mm -hmm. when, when it does tracebacks. It's not, it's not being done yet, but it will be. But you can, you can do that. You okay. can have a, the, any, any, any Lua value has a, has a type and I don't know if it, if it, that was the, the question. Yeah, no, it, it's just, it was a little. You uh, can ask in Portuguese too. And, uh, and I know. Then, I, mean, I, can, think, <laughs> I think. I, I can understand, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a native Portuguese speaker, but. The, uh, yeah, I think, no, I was just curious. Or we, we can talk later. And that, that, yeah, so okay, we, yes, we sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Bem, mais uma Thank salve you again. <laughs>